Okay, the last couple of problems of uh, August 2017, numbers 30 and 31. These are two-point questions still. Construct and response, two points each. Now, for this one, it's been a while since we've had to do this, but uh, what they're telling us is there is a sequence of rigid motions that map angle A onto angle X. Okay, so those are congruent. Angle C onto angle Z and AC onto XZ. The question is, is BC then congruent to YZ? Explain why. Okay, so first what we want to do is we want to say, um, let's see, triangle ABC is going to be congruent. Uh, let's, let's skip a little bit. Hang on. Sorry about that. First, Angle A is congruent to angle X. Angle C congruent to angle Z. And AC congruent to angle, I'm sorry, side XZ. Because there is a sequence of rigid motion. Transformations that will map one onto the other. So that's the first move. Okay. The second move is now triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ by the side angle side. Uh, triangle congruence theorem. Uh, whoops, not the side angle side, I apologize. That is angle side angle. Careful, you know. Uh, that's a pair of angles, that's a pair of sides, that's a pair of angles. So angle side angle. Okay, now. BC is congruent to YZ because of, and you can probably get away with CPCTC, but I'm going to write it out because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, so this one, um, you could probably get away with uh, doing this on the graphing calculator, finding the center. I know there's a way to do that. You know, sketch it, find the center, find the radius, explain how you did it. I probably can give you full credit for that. It's meant to take this equation and put into center radius format. Now to do that, we'll have to complete the square at least once. Looks like twice. Okay, so it's really one of the algebra topics that we covered this year. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite it so that you know you can see where things are going to go. What I first want to do is add over the y term. And let me, I'm not going to mess with it yet. Okay. So that's just one move at a time. I'm not going to skip any steps. Now what I'm going to do is rearrange uh, this. And then I can get ready to complete the square. Now, what I teach my students is, we really work on this for a while. First, if you knew what x minus 3 quantity squared was, completing the square becomes a lot easier. We've got to know that cold so that when we come to this portion of it, it's really easy. Well, you have to memorize that x minus 3 squared is x squared minus 6x plus 9, or at least be able to double distribute and get that. Okay? If you could test out a bunch of them. Um, uh, y plus 4 squared, it's going to be y squared plus 8y plus 16. 
knowing what these turn into is critical to completing the square. Sorry about that. So, what you need to realize is that we have this, we have that, but this number, whatever we put here, is going to complete this square. And you'll see in a minute. Then I'm just going to just going to leave that space. I'm going to leave it blank for a minute. Same thing's going to happen over here. Okay, y squared plus 8y plus some unknown number. That's going to complete the square for this one. Now, whatever I do, whatever I add into the left side, I need to be balanced and add the same amount into the right side. That keeps it an equation, doesn't unbalance it. Now, I skip ahead and teach my students, listen, you know that these three are going to turn into something squared, right? What is it? It's half of this, essentially. So it's x minus 3 quantity squared. How do you get this number? Whatever negative 3 squared is, it's actually positive 9. Okay, take some practice. All right, similar idea here. Keep the plus. These three terms are going to come together to turn into y plus 4 squared. So what's this missing number? 16. 4 squared is 16. Now, all three of these turn into this. That's a little bit tricky as well. Where do they go? They're in here. Okay, those extra numbers, they're in here so that they complete that square. All right. Now, since I added 9 to the left side to keep it balanced, I need to add 9 to the right. Likewise with the 16, okay? So then that's 25. Looks like it's 81. Let me just double check. Yeah. Yep, it's 81. So now, what is it asking for? I know that's what I needed to do. Determine the state the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius. Okay. So the center, what I teach students is that it's the same number, but the opposite sign when it's in this setup. So 3, negative 4 for the center. The radius is always the square root of whatever's over there if we're in center radius form. So the radius is 9. Here's our answer for two points. And that is it for uh, this video.